Hi, I'm Karen Pedersen with Close to My Heart, and I'm excited to share a little bit of time today with you as I create a layout. I'm starting with some photos of my long-haired son. And um, these are photos of him recently in a football game, but there's a story behind these photos. A couple of years ago, he said, Mom, I'm growing my hair out, and he's never had long hair before, always very short. And I said, Dawson, why do you want long hair? And he said, I just really want that running down the field look of long hair flowing out of the back of my helmet, which we all thought was hilarious. And my husband might have even said, Dawson, you should probably worry a little more about how you play football than how you look while you play it. But obviously he disregarded the looking while he played it because the hair is long and curly and does flow out the back of the helmet. And so I wanted to do a layout, not just because these photos are great of a recent game he played in, but also to document that story. So these are the photos I'm starting with, and that's my inspiration. Probably a lot of you are the same way. You start with some awesome photos and decide what you want to do with those. So looking at these photos, I knew I wanted a little bit of red in my layout, but not too much because I didn't want them to overwhelm the photos. So I knew that to help the photos sing, by keeping the, the most of the papers I use really neutral, that would really help with that. So the first thing I did once I chose my photos was begin to look for some inspiration for the pattern of the layout. And I found a great pattern in our Make It From Your Heart How To Scrapbooking Book Volume 3, pattern number 5. And if you look at this pattern, you'll notice that actually instead of four photos, which is what I have, it has five. This photo right here actually it's two three by fours. But I knew that obviously a three by four and a three by four together make a four by six, that this pattern would work for me. And I really liked that these were a little bit offset in the pattern so that I had some space up here for a little bit of journaling because I did have a story to tell that I knew would take a little bit of space and also plenty of room for a title. So once I chose my pattern, the next thing I did was start looking for paper. And um, one of the the lines that we carry with Close to My Heart that I especially love is our fundamental lines of paper. They're really versatile papers that um, have patterns that are really usable. This is our basics fundamental line. So I pulled it out first and um, looking at the pattern, I knew that I wanted a little bit of pattern paper, but not a lot. I really, like I said, wanted those photos to sing. So as I looked at the um, pattern, I thought maybe I could bring in this charcoal, the colors, for my son's team are black and red and white, so I thought this charcoal might be great, but I also knew I couldn't use it in large amounts. So as I looked at my pattern, I thought it might be really great for this one. So we'll see. We'll see when we pull it all together. So I'm going to pull out this stripe. And also, um, I really, really like this little burlapy looking piece. So I'm going to pull, pull that out too, that kind of soft gray. And I like this one too, this soft gray. So we'll see which ones work together. I think those are the three I'll start with. And as I mentioned, I wanted a little bit of red. So I then pulled out our um, adventure line of fundamentals. So again, basic colors. This one's our brights. And this red stripe I thought would be just perfect in a small amount. And it's a different scale than that one, so, um, so I, I'm hoping these two stripes will work together. I don't always put stripes together, but I think those might work really well together. The only other red that was in there was hearts, and I thought my son might not appreciate little hearts on his layout, so I didn't pull those out. Um, so these are the four that I'm thinking I want to use as far as pattern goes, and I may, may keep some of these, may take some of them out. And then I also need a little bit of cardstock for this pattern. So I have a few pieces of cardstock I've pulled out too that are all really neutral, and we'll see how they go. Got a little bit of pewter, and one thing to note about our cardstock, if you don't already know, one side is lighter and one side is darker. So I'm not sure which of which of them I'll use. We'll see. Um, this is a piece of linen, and I actually, as I looked at the pattern, thought linen would be really great to back my photos with. So we'll see if that plays out as well, but I like that it's such a subtle difference between white, which I'm definitely going to use as my base, because I really like that soft, clean um, look, so that, again, my pictures will be the focus. So we'll see how we go from here. Um, I'm picturing in my mind using this darker gray as the strip behind the photos, 
and then using the really light gray to mat with and then some of these patterns for the stripes that you see along the side. And so we'll see if what I'm picturing in my mind turns out as well as I'm hoping. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna start with a white base and we'll go ahead and start cutting some paper. I'll set this white aside. And um, in my mind, I'm thinking that I will probably use the red as this little bit thicker stripes on the edge and then that charcoal stripe I showed you at the beginning as this tiny little thin strip so that neither of them feel like they're over overwhelming the photos. Um, so I'm going to assume that's going to look well as I start to cut my paper here. Oh, I've got a little piece of Christmas paper left in there. You can tell what I scrapbooked last. So I need one piece that is one inch by 12 inches, according to the pattern, so we'll cut that. Another, that's one and a half, so we will go to that. And you'll notice I switched which directions I'm cutting on my trimmer because I really, the thicker it is, I like to come out this side. If it's a thin strip, I like to come out this side, it's a little bit easier for me to work with. So I've got that cut with my nice cranberry stripe. And then that tiny little strip is a half inch in the pattern. So again, I'll cut more onto this side. That's easier for me to and hold on to. And I think before I go much further, I'm just going to pull out my base again and lay these on like the left side and, and see what, I, what paper I want to use next that will go next to that. So we have the red stripe and the charcoal stripe here. And then next I have a little bit thicker piece and I think I'm going to try and decide between these two here. And hopefully on camera you can see the pattern in both of them. This one feels a little more like a twill, this one more like almost a flannel. Um, and I'm leaning toward the lighter of the two, so we'll see how that plays out. We need a two and a half inch strip of that. And a six and a half, I think, of that. There we go. And then lastly, I think we need some, oh, there's a strip that goes across the middle. Almost forgot about that. That was the one I was thinking about using this pewter color for, and I need to decide whether to go with the dark or the light side. This is the light side, and the dark, and as if I look at my pictures on that, um, Put the linen behind it just for a second and see what I'm thinking, see what I think of it with the linen against it and which side seems. I'm, I think I'm leaning toward the lighter side on this one, so that's, that's how we'll go. Um, and the strip that goes across the middle is a three inch strip. One side it is three by 12 for the right side of the layout. And on the left it is, it looks like, three by ten and a quarter. So now that I've got that cut, we're going to all keep our fingers crossed that I love it. Oh, I do really like that. So I'm going to quickly cut my photo mats, which are actually right on the cutting guide of the pattern. So that's great. We'll start. I've got two 6x4 photos and one 4x4 photo. Um, so we'll start with the mats that are 6 and a quarter by 4 and a quarter. And there'll still be plenty left to do that 4 and a quarter by 4 and a quarter mat. Now we'll just throw these photos on these mats and we'll be in business. I'm using the dark side of the linen, although I think the light side would look nice as well. I think it really both would have looked just fine. I'll 
set aside the two that I'm saving for the other side. One thing that I wanted to mention that I probably should have said as I laid this down, um, as I looked at my photos and this pattern, I liked that I had a photo of Dawson looking in and looking the other direction in, so I thought those would lay together really well in the center of the layout. Um, and then I'll use this one over on this other side. Actually, maybe I'll do it the other way. I like that a little bit better. Then he's not looking all the way off the layout. He's, I think that's the order I'll use them in. Okay, so I've got these here and they're ready to glue, but as I look at it, I actually think, even though I really like that it's the pattern's over here and there's not a lot going on behind my photos, I, I think maybe a border along the bottom of this would be great. And I, I pulled out a stamp set because it's a stamp set I use a lot. It's one I really love. So I, um, I actually, this isn't even football themed. It's not hair themed. But these stamps are great stamps for lots of different scrapbooking things. There's cameras and great um, sentiments, some borders. And I think we're going to see what happens with this border right here. So I've chosen to use this border that looks like a film strip border. We'll see how it works. Um, and when I use a stamp like this, I like to line it up on my face down on my Versamat. So it's nice and straight. And then I can line it up right with the line on my block. So it's ready to stamp. I'm going to use a charcoal ink and turn my Versamat over on the squishy side to stamp and stamp these strips here that go across either side. I'm going to season it quickly first. If you just rub your stamp across your skin, and actually these are stamps I've used before and they're seasoned, but I still like to do that every time I stamp. It just really gives a nice impression when you stamp it that way. I also think I'll take a little scrap, hopefully I have one hiding around here somewhere, of White Daisy and just stamp a few other things I really like in the stamp set in case I want to use them. I really like this camera. I'll stop there. We'll see if I use those pieces as we go along. I like all three of them, so I'll see if I can fit them into my layout. So let's go back to where we were. I'm going to start actually adhering my paper. So far, I really like it. You might notice as I'm turning paper over that uh, the pattern paper I'm using, it, there's two sides to each pattern paper as well as our cardstocks having two different shades of the same color. The pattern paper has sometimes two different colors and different patterns on them. So they're really usable. Pattern says that this should be about, I think I'll turn my Versamat over three inches. So we'll, we'll start with three and see if my title fits where I want it to there. Um, so I won't push too hard on that. And back to my photos. Let's see. Oh, here they are. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of adhesive right in the middle of that so that if I need to move it, I can still move it as I'm working. I like just that hint of the border peeking out. Now one thing that I did ahead of time was cut a title. Um, I knew that what the title of this layout would be. 
Um, I decided to call it football is life because that's a little saying we have in our family. My husband was a college football player. My dad was. All three of my boys have been. So that's kind of our little family saying and motto. So I did use our Cricut ahead of time knowing that I would use a title that said football is life. Um, so I cut out football. I think I used the font in our uh, art booking cartridge for that. And then the is I used... I'm pretty sure the font in our flower market Cricut cartridge collection to create that one. And I also had already picked out the stamp set, so it has a great life in it. So I'm going to be stamping that on the page. And I, th I think I'm going to put the title right where the pattern has me, right here across the bottom. I always find it helpful when I'm putting a title on that several different letters that are not connected is if I lay it out exactly like I want it to look and space it just right before I glue anything down. So I think I'll do football on this side and go ahead and glue that on. I'll move it up so I don't get adhesive on there. I like that these letters are a little bit kind of uh, what's the word I want? A little um, playful so that if I don't have them perfectly lined up, it still feels like it fits just like I want it to. And then I don't have to be so perfect about where I place them. I can actually put some a little higher, some a little lower, maybe even some that are a little tilted and, and get a great look with those. Okay, I really like how that looks. So I'm going to set aside my is here so that I can use that on the other side. Now, we're ready to start on the other side, I think. And it is a little different on this side than the first side. Um, this other edge has some thicker pieces that we cut. So we're gonna start with the one and a half inch of the cranberry stripe that we chose. Then again, that charcoal diagonal stripe. Let's see, the other side I went, yep, I just want to make sure my diagonals are going in the same direction. I guess it would be okay if they went the opposite directions. And then we have a nice thick piece of this uh, twill looking paper. And here's where I'm going to make sure I use my other layout to be my guide. I've got this strip that goes all the way across on this side of the layout. And so I want to make sure that I position that so that it goes straight across both sides. And again, the pattern shows me that exactly. So that's not something I thought of that was a big deal. It was great and easy to follow right in the pattern that they go straight across from each other. Okay, I think that's right where I want it to be. Now you'll notice in the pattern, um, I think I mentioned this right at the very beginning, that these two photos are a little bit lower. And I have a little bit of journaling that I've already done to put on this layout. Um, this layout was inspired not only by the photos, but by the story that I already told you about this crazy kid of mine and his long hair. And so I loved that this pattern left space for that journaling. I also um, think that, you know, when we scrapbook, sometimes we're inspired by photos, which this one was, and sometimes it's by a story, and this one was as well. Um, but sometimes I might see a paper that I just absolutely love, and it inspires some photos that I have. So. Um, I don't think there's a right or a wrong way to scrapbook. I'm just adding my is to the layout now. And these are tiny little letters, so I'm using a finer glue to use to put those on. And then as I mentioned, this great stamp set has a life in it that we're going to use. That I knew right from the start because I just think it's such a great um, stamp set. And so I knew I was going to work it into this layout. There we 
we go. So it's looking pretty good. I'm liking the whole look and feel of this layout. I think now we're just ready to embellish a little bit. Um, I'm not sure. I feel like maybe my background's a little more plain than I wanted it to be, and I'm trying to decide how I might want to embellish that and add some personality, but not overwhelm these photos. And um, I have my paints here on my table, and I, I considered stamping and painting, but I think, I think what I'm going to do is um, actually splatter a little bit of paint. So for that, what am I going to need? I'm going to need a paintbrush, and I don't want my splatters to be very large, so I'm going to use a small paintbrush. And I'm going to use my black paint and a piece of my paper that I wasn't using to mask off anything I don't want to get wet. And when I splatter, there's lots of different ways you can splatter. I'm going to use this small paintbrush, like I said, because I really want this splatter to be quite fine. Um, if I were to take my finger and tap this way, I'd get a little bit wider splatter. And I want to be a little more in control of where my splatter's going. You want to be have a nice wet paintbrush. Let me put my water in here so you can see I'm dipping it in water. Um, so then I'm just going to hold my paintbrush straight and do a little bit of tapping that way. And I'll get some fun splatters on my layout that way. Let's see how I like that. Yeah, I'm actually really liking that, but I think I want a little bit more. And this time I want a little bit bigger splatter, so I am going to let it go, be a little bit more free in where the direction it goes. I like that a lot. I'll set that aside for a second to dry. And do the same thing over here. On this side, on the, I think I'll go upper and the bottom here a little bit. Yeah, I, I really like how that turned out. As you can see, it just added just a little bit more personality to the layout without taking over the photos. Um, I think I am going to go back and use a few of the things that I stamped before. This little spot right here feels a little bare to me, and I have this camera that I stamped. I feel like that might look really great right there. Just a little tip when you're cutting out, our microchip scissors are my very favorite. And I find that as I cut, if I do more moving of my paper than of my scissors, I get a much nice smoother line. So as you can see, I'm just twisting my paper as I go a little bit here. We'll see how this camera looks in that little spot right there. I like that a lot. While I'm at it, I might as well just cut out these others. I have a feeling that I'm going to want to use all of these. They're so cute. And I think they're kind of playful, like the title. So we'll see if we can find a place to use some of these stamped images. I could actually have used that whole set. I just love it all. Again, remember to, as you're cutting, just move your paper. It also helps you on things like this circle when you do that to keep your edges even all the way around than if you're just moving your scissors. Okay, we've got those. I'm not sure where I'm going to want to use those yet. I'll put them right here just while I decide. I also think I want to add a little more personality to the layout. But before I do that, um, I, as I mentioned, I had this journaling ready that pretty much tells the story I told you at the beginning. And so I did it in strips because I had already chosen my pattern knowing that I was going to fill up this space right here at the top. And I really love to journal in strips like this. And I chose a, just kind of a masculine typewriter looking font so that it fit with the layout. And I also like to kind of stagger them a little bit. So I'll take this top one, maybe start closer to the edge of the page with it and then the next one move in a little bit so that they're not all perfectly lined up. Yep, I really like how that's turning out. I think now the only thing I feel like is missing, I would really like to see a little bit more personality right here and 
I pulled these out. I didn't know if I would use them or not. But I'm thinking, actually, this is a really great place to use them. We have these fun journal cards at Close to My Heart that have tabs with different words, and you can write right on them. And I don't think I'll actually use them for writing, but I do think that maybe they'd look cute. Let's see how this looks. And remember, I didn't glue those photos on too, too much so that I could have the... Um, luxury of going back and playing a little bit later in case I wanted to move or add. I'm really liking the way that looks, but I, I still don't think it's standing out quite enough. I'm wondering if I add a little bit more of the pattern paper we began with. I wonder how this would look under there. If I just had a tiny poking out. Yeah, I think I'm going to just cut a strip of this paper and maybe play a little bit with layering it under those journaling cards and see how that looks. Okay, let's come back here and see how this plays out. Oh, I actually really like that. So I'm just going to snip a little bit with my scissors here and slide it under here. Yep, I like that a lot. And we'll add this with it. I like that. So I think I'll do the same thing on the other side. I think that probably will be a fun way to tie it all together. Yep, I like that a lot. I'll just slide that under there. Now I have these two pieces here that I'd like to use, and I think we decided I was going to add that camera right there, so I'm going to use some 3D foam tape to give it a little dimension and pop it up. Let's see if you can see both sides and we can decide where these might work well. Kind of like that smile right there. Maybe I'll snap down here. Hmm. Ooh, I kind of like it right there. So I think we'll put it right there. And I can add some more adhesive behind here now, knowing that it's where I want it to be. And a little bit of 3D foam tape behind here, and I think, I think we'll be done. I'm really happy with the way this has turned out, and I feel like it accomplished the goal that I began with, which was to really let the photos and the journaling be the story behind this layout, and I think, I think we've accomplished that. I feel like when you look here, you see the photos and look right at the journaling, and everything else is just a really great accent. So I hope you enjoyed it. I sure enjoyed my time with you. All the products that I used today um, are Close to My Heart products, and you can find these products and a consultant in your area at close to myheart.com.